not really much to say about this, obviously an easy fold if it gets followed to me. Um, yeah, so Jay Burrison again, like, seems to be, obviously you could just have a hand, but seems to be picking up really well in just, just how wide Mormon is actually opening, or at least seems to be opening. I haven't seen Mormon's cards, but like, just by the, the frequency of his raises, it seems pretty clear that he's opening a ton of hands. And Jay Burrison has, has picked up on that, it seems pretty well, even, even though like he's shoving 10 times Mormon's bet, like he's picking up a lot of chips when when Mormon falls. He's picking up like, if Mormon makes it 15k, he's, yeah, he's picking up like 30k each time, which is just absolutely huge with a stack like that. Um, so definitely, definitely seems to be very aware of what's going on, so Jay Barrison. And Mormon opens again, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, I'd be really interested to see see Mormon's cards here, like just for this whole final table. He's just playing amazingly aggressively, and I kind of wonder like what what kind of hands he opens and what spots. Yeah, just holding here. Pretty good players behind me. You're not gonna mess with them. Hand flop terrible. Um, yeah, this could get pretty, could potentially get interesting, yeah, because this is the kind of flop where I'll growl a in and Mormon checks, like, this is the kind of flop I expect to hit both of them fairly hard, like, just little low balls like that, especially with a flush draw as well, um, could easily generate some action, and, like, they could honestly, I'm not even going to try to bother to guess what kind of hands they have, because it's such a wide range. But it's pretty interesting to see if Ronald, Ronald pulls the trigger here and just jams it in. I will say that I don't think when Mormon, like when Ronald limps in and, and on a board like this and then leads, I don't think Mormon is, is bluff raising very often at all. I think he has some kind of hand here for the most part. I could be wrong, but... Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a huge pot. Uh, kind of cooler though, like when it, I don't really blame any of them for how they played it for sure. Uh, it seems fairly standard with two aggressive players blind over blind, even though it's a weak top pair. Uh, it's still a top pair. <laughs> Alright, so I have king now, and I come in for a moon race, just like all the other times. And again, I just take it down, like no one want to play with me, this is pretty frustrating. King Jack off here. Just gonna open it again, I assume. Yep. Now this time I hope people don't play back at me because they should have done that before when I had ace king and ace queen. If someone free bets here, that would be pretty awkward. Filling the blanks, jam it would be pretty awkward as well, but given how tidy has played, I would probably have to fold it. Feel really gross about it. I'm not sure actually. I could afford to call um yeah, that would be pretty close. Alright, either way, didn't happen. So, blinds are off. Fighting chicken, uh, open jamming the button, which, while not certain, is a good indication that he knows what he's doing. People who make big open shafts, uh, especially this deep in a tournament, it's usually a, a good indicator that they're a decent, competent player. You rarely see, um, more inexperienced players do that. Fill in the blanks, jams the button, standard, and Pimes. Kind of a, a little surprised Pimes called with Ace 4 off, actually. Like, just given how, how tight he's, like, I expect him to call a shot there. And he did call fail quickly, you gotta give him credit for that. I might have un underestimated him, it's very possible, like, I don't have that many hands with him. I'm just going from, like, what I've seen in my intuition talking. Alright, Mormon opens again, and unfortunately I can't shove on him. I'd love to, but this is a pretty bad hand. Mm. 
Yeah, Mormon Odin's. We have a trash in hand again. Kind of wish we had like, uh, like I don't. I'm not even asking for like great hands gun thing, but like instead of like queen dudes and eight dudes offsuit, if I just had like kind of um a hand like this, like a king ten suited hand, a, a six like a middle pair a suited ace, like something where it could reasonably reshift against him and feel okay about it, that would be great. Um, all right, so here we have this is a pretty interesting spot. He just free access like he always does. Um, times I have King Ten suited on the bottom. I feel like this is somewhat close, but I definitely, yeah, I folded here. Uh, looking back at that, I'm not happy with that player at all. I definitely feel like that was a clear, well, not super clear, but I definitely feel like given the way he has played, I feel like that was a shot for sure. I messed up on that one. Um, another thing to consider if I shove on him there is like. Even though he made that call with, with ace forward before versus the bottom, like, he's not that likely to, um, to call me, I feel like, just because if, if I double through him, like, it's gonna put a significant dent in his stack. He's gonna be a discharge stack or close to it. Um, and I feel like that kind of player will value that a lot. And it just seems, yeah, oh, I really messed that one up. Man, I'm angry about that now. Oh well. I guess that's the good thing about uh, watching my own play. I can, I can help remove some of my own leaks as well. I even had a, a curse to set them all in, just for some reason ended up folding. Can't really explain it. All right, gotta move on. Uh, Mormon Five and Chicken has been playing blind versus blind like the last three times or something. This is ridiculous. But Mormon takes it down. So one for the good guys. All right, so here I have Jack Ten off. I feel like this is a pretty good spot to open, like just with a min raise. Um, like for a couple, like it doesn't against with so many good players behind. It doesn't matter a ton that I have Ten Jack off instead of like say Deuce Seven off, because there I'm gonna call that off. But if such a bears and dust decide to like just defend his big blind, it floods really well. And the other thing is that if someone you either free bats me or just shoves it in my face. I can easily fold. Like it's not like there are any of the stacks. That's like eleven or twelve big blind. You know, I would sort of have to fold, but almost be priced in kind of, and people would know what would be opening really wide. Um, here I can just open, and if someone reads it, just dump it easily. All right. So here, Mormon opens, times defend. I'm gonna go out on limb and say Mormon continuation bets. Yep. And times call it pretty quickly. This could be an interesting hand. Uh, a Mormon check behind. Oh, that's an interesting river. Um, I feel like, yeah, when times play here, I just think he has a queen like 100% of the time. He's not the kind of guy like, I'm not saying he, he like even that he flat calls ace king or jacks or anything pre flop, but if he had, like, let's say he did have top two or um, or a set or something, he's not the kind of guy who will value better than that river. I feel pretty certain of that. So I'd say his most likely hand was like jack queen, probably, although there are other combinations that could be as well. Alright, here, um, fighting chicken open shafts, we just have to fold again. Not really anything else about that. Nothing to do. Many of those these free kind of hands like the thing. It'd be nice if I could get something where I could just reshift. And like, because reshoving here in this stage of the tournament is a pretty crucial way to, to chip off. If it goes through, like, you pick up a ton of chips. You pick up like 40,000, which is absolutely huge. But I just haven't had the hands, unfortunately. This is a sort of interesting spot as well. I wonder what fighting chicken has. Huh. 
I'd expect him to continue Ace and Bet most of his strong hands. But I'd also con consider that he would like continue Ace and Bet most of his bluffs as well. So either he had something in the middle or he just slow played, I guess that's possible. Seems like a pretty bad spot to do it though. Alright, moving on. There's four to save that. Should Yeah, I'm gonna follow that anyways even if it was followed to me. Save it off and, and Mortman is just gonna shove too often to make it profitable to open there. And save it off. Ships it in. Ten pimes. And yeah. As we've seen before, pimes are very likely to call it off pre flop, I don't think. Yeah, as you can see, like a lot of the spots here with with so many good players at the table are just someone opens and someone reshots and or like someone shoves over you, and either you have a hand like where you feel you can call or you can't. So a lot of it at this point is just comes down to like knowing what hands you can open, and what hands you can shove with, and what hands you can call a shove with. And yeah, here again, like, it's really amazing with so many, so many competent players at the table, like, the way it, it plays out, like, how aggressive people, like, you see a raise and we raise almost every single hand here. There would be a lot of, like, I've been on a lot of final tables with, with significantly weaker players, where, you, like, you would see a ton of flops. And, like, a lot of passive players, you just don't see that here. It really is a tough, tough hundred rebuy final table. And you gotta love that Mormon, even <laughs> though he only has like 160k now, like he's opening just as many hands as he was when he had 500k. He like it was like I talked about before. Yeah, he gets reshaped down again here. Like, he just keeps on opening. He just never gives up. Never slows down. He has to fold again. Um, a little bit surprised by that. Should have figured out by now that Cedric Barrison is just. It's gonna mash it over him a ton. Alright, 10 8 suited on the good point here. 